Hi, this is Jeff. I'm one of the owners of Planning Pod, and I'm going to walk you through how to get started using the event tools in our application. So I'm going to first click on events in the main navigation bar. And first, here in the events area, I'm going to show you how to add your own event groups. I've already added some of my own here. I'm going to click on the Add button uh, to add uh, a group called Conferences. And when you create your event groups, you can then categorize your events into these groups. Uh, there's a setting there also where you can set a particular group as the default group that automatically pulls up when you enter the events area. The events in your account will be listed right here. And to go into an event, you just simply click on it and that will open up all of the tools that are located inside of the event. And you would just simply click on one of the tools here to access that tool. But first, I'm going to show you some search options. You can sort your events by name or by date. And you can also use this search field here to type in the name of an, of an event to access it. Uh, right now, I'm going to create a new event, which I will do by clicking on the red Add Event button right here. And you can start off by adding your event name. as well as a venue location. And you can also assign your event to a group. We're gonna assign it to the conferences group we just created. And now you can select the uh, date of your event. And in the calendar here, you can click on this top bar to uh, find the year that you wanna place the event date in, as well as the month. And I'm gonna select the day, so uh, June 24th, or I'm sorry, July the 23rd of 2015. And we'll put um, an end date of uh, July the 25th. And then we'll add our start time and end times here. And if the event ends and starts and ends in the same day, you just need to place the start date. You do not need to uh, insert an end date. And then in this area right here is where you would assign contacts to this event. Um, and these are people who you want to give access to the event who will be able to log in and access this and collaborate with you inside of the event. So I'm going to um, add some of the contacts in my contact list here. And then here is where you would build your vendor list. So again, I'm going to click in this area and add people who I have flagged or designated as vendors in my contacts area. And you can learn more about how to do that in the video for the contacts tool. Now here I am simply building a vendor list. These contacts, these vendors will not be able to access my account and will not have any kind of access to this event. So after I save it, it brings me back to the screen and shows me my new event right here with all the event tools that I can now access. And once you start adding information, if you click on this view event snapshot, it will give you an overview of what you've worked on inside of each tool. And the more event information tab will let you uh, view your contacts you've assigned to this event, as well as your vendor list. And it will also give you the ability to uh, print out event-wide PDFs. So we're going to go there, generate PDFs. And the one uh, PDF of note is the event book. This will enable you to download a PDF of every detail that you have saved inside of the event. And it also gives you the option of what to include and not to include inside of that PDF. A couple other things in the event overview screen I want to point out. You can always go back and edit those initial details that we just added. The archive button here, if the event's over and you no longer want it to count against the total for your package in Planning Pod, just simply click on the archive button. It will archive the event. It will not delete any of the items and you can always unarchive it later on down the road. You do have the option to delete an event, but if you do, all that information will be deleted from your account. I'm now going to go into another event I've been working on and I'm going to select the to do tool for this particular event. And here are the contents of that tool. 
Um, as you see here on the left hand side are all the tools that are located inside of this event. And to go to another tool, you just simply click on it. So I'm going to go to the floor plans tool inside of that event. And I'm also going to click on the budget tool here. So this is how you can navigate inside of the tools inside of a single event. And if you ever wonder what event you are in, the breadcrumb right up here will tell you exactly what event and what tool inside of the, that event you're in. And if you want to go to another event, you simply click on the switch event link there in the top. It will show you a long list of your events. And again, you can use this search box to type in the name of a particular event you're looking for. We'll just click on that new event that we created and we'll click on one of the tools inside of that event. And here you can start building your guest list or attendee list for this particular event. Now there's one other way that you can access events and event tools from the dashboard page, which I want to show you. So I'm going to click on the dashboard. And in the top right hand side of the dashboard is a quick launch tool where you can select the event that you want to go into. And then you can select the tool inside of that event that you want to access and then click on the go button and it will immediately take you from the dashboard to that particular tool inside of that event. Thanks for watching this video. And if you want to know more about event tools, there are other videos that we've prepared that will walk you through how to use each one of those.